have obligation to speak good and to give compliment and not to be cheap. My father, Ahmad Kuna, always used to say, and I repeat it in many of my lectures, when you have something bad to say, keep it to yourself. When you have something good, say it loud and clear. When you have some compliment to say to your wife, say it loud and clear and scream. If you have a comment, ladies and gentlemen, keep it to yourself. You don't have to share your comment to yourself. And this is one of the greatest challenges. So the Bible should have a right. How can we manage to be, to control anger? If today the topic is all about character, we're going to touch it. This is just introduction. How can we touch? How can we handle anger? Anger is something that is out of control. Emotion. Can you control emotion? Wish I could control it. Ladies, can you control emotion? Your husband <coughs> get you nervous. Get you upset. Can you not get upset with that? <coughs> yes, I want one second. <laughs> Even that one second is is taken to yourself. Can we really control emotion? Anger? Somebody made you angry and buried you, step on you, scratch the car, stole money from you. Can you control your anger? Yes or no? Control the reaction and not the emotion. Oh, yes. So, and how do you control the reaction? It's beautiful. So you said beautiful that a man cannot control a human being. Man or woman cannot control the emotion because emotion is coming. But you can avoid the actions. The action part, you can avoid. And how do you avoid the actions? I will teach you a few rules today. Hey, our knife tonight is... Our sponsor of tonight is Michelle Hakimi Beritan. <coughs> Almighty God, we give them a long and healthy and happy life. Amen. And another good news, another good news. Amen. Amen. Until I happen to it together. Amen. With love and peace and harmony. There are many children that are such We are pushing and coaching. Let us say amen. Amen. Twelve of them, minimum. Let us say amen. Amen. To have unlimited parnasar to support these poor children. Amen. Amen. Let us say amen. 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 To have to run in their life. Kedushan Tara. Respect and love. Let us say amen. Amen. Shall take a look. So how do you control your anger? And then I'm going to ask you the question, I'm going to move to all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how you control? The Rebbe should have a right. The first thing is, what do you do? What do you do in order to control? The Rebbe gave maybe two or three uh, uh, advice. It's one of the secrets to be happy. One of the secrets to control your emotion, your character, especially for people that get in upset very fast, most of us. They said about us, we don't, you know, um, they said about Morocco and we don't get upset. People make us upset. Are going? Morocco is not winning. No, it's winning with them. <laughs> we can never get upset. People get us upset. We always have excuse why to get upset. I'm not upset. I'm very calm. You made me upset. So how do you control this anger? And all of us is, is dealing with these issues on a daily basis. The first thing is that the Rebbe writes, if you're going to ask him sorry after, how difficult is to say so? Ladies never say sorry because they never want. And gentlemen will give you flowers and gift and uh, a vacation and uh, how do you call it? Uh, Bura Bura, Cancun, Gehenam, anything you want to go. But the sorry, they're not going to tell you. I'm sorry. Not that it, for ladies, it's not I'm sorry. I never own. Why that I need? It's even worse. She doesn't even understand where she's wrong. I mean, the minute that God created me, I was the perfect human being. You're always the one that's doing the mistakes. It's the customer. The customer is always right. The lady is always right. This is the attitude. And the man, he knows that he's mistakes. He's not going to say I'm sorry. The rabbi right. If you're going to say I'm sorry, last week, last week, no, not last week, two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, before Pesach, and the day of Pesach, the night of the Sabbath, I went into a family. And I knocked the door and gave them a gift, uh, matzah, bags of matzah, and I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the mistake that we did. For me, it's not difficult. I'm a human being. If I'm doing mistakes, I'm not ashamed to say I'm sorry. And my relationship with my wife, 
I'm not ashamed to say I'm sorry. My relationship with my students or my community, I'm not afraid to say I'm sorry. I'm not ashamed to say I'm sorry. This is part of life. Just the opposite. Make you, we spoke about last week. I'm not going to... So, you know why if you're going to say I'm sorry, it's going to help you? Because if you're going to know that after the anger, you're going to have to say I'm sorry, your ego, your ego, why is it so difficult to say I'm sorry? Because you're full of yourself. I'm going to apologize. Next time, you're not going to get angry anymore. Because you're going to know that you're going to have to apologize. And you know how difficult it is to apologize? So the Rebbe said, if a person will remember that he has to apologize, <coughs> he will think twice before he's going to react in a stupid ways. Before he's going to react and not to fair ways. This is one. The second thing is, and I know, ladies, what I'm going to say tonight is going to be almost impossible and you're not going to like it. But just listen until then, before you run. Do not speak when you are upset. They always tell you, let it go, release. This nonsense advice never work. It's good for psychology because they need to make money. And in order to make money, they need you to fight with your husband to make it crisis. And if you have a crisis, it's 10 sessions. How do you call marriage counselors? 10 sessions, $200 every session, or psychology, $350? We're talking about $4,000. So they will give you advice that will ruin your life. Speaking, doing anger, do not help. Just make it worse. You hear that? Speaking, doing anger, do not help. Just make it worse. The first thing that you do when you're angry, be quiet. Do not raise it. Wait later on. Wait until the end. Because when you wait, you come down a little. When you're upset, did you ever, ever realize that when you're upset and you're talking? And your husband made you upset and you said, you know what, you made me upset. You never, you didn't talk the garbage today. And then you start to talk. You didn't talk. You know what, I remember. Last week also you didn't talk. Two weeks ago. The whole month you didn't talk the garbage. You... What exactly happened? The more that you talk, the more emotionally and the more memory you got. And now, for me, one time, the garbage, he didn't talk. Now, you count it 60 times during the year, he didn't talk. 60 times. Now you've blown it up completely. Did you realize what happened? When you're getting upset, the first thing that you have to do is. Ow! Oh, yoga. <laughs> Be quiet. What a beautiful advice is that? What a beautiful advice. Do not react and do not speak during anger. You can, cannot control the emotion, but you, control, you can control the result. You can control the result. And the result is in your hand. It might be that this is the greatest topic of tonight. Just before, just before, I will give you today two, three short messages. Each one of them, by its own, can change your life. Tonight, the first advice is, I'm going to give you, this week they invite me and the young Israel forest is here. Kirat Ahavat Shalom. Ahavat Shalom, right? Rabbi Margi. Beautiful community. And Kohen Binimino. And Yaakov Kaiko. And many others. Start a program. Start a class. After the Tefillah on a daily basis. Now why is it important for me to talk about it? In a second you're going to know. Ladies and gentlemen. They have something that can guarantee you to be healthy. Can guarantee you to be healthy. Guarantee you that you will never have sickness. You know, I came, I came back from this speech and I told my wife, you have to accept it yourself to do it on a daily basis. I told my student to do it. I'm trying to spread as much the rumor in order that everybody will do it. Because then you can save, how do you call it, the insurance, life insurance. Gentlemen, don't think that you're smart when you have life insurance. Life insurance is the worst business deal that you can do. Ask me why. Why? Can you ask me why? 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 Moshe, life insurance is good. You know, especially when you have $5 million. Don't look at me like this. I have life insurance. $10 million. Listen to what the foolish people we are. Life insurance, nobody uses when he's alive. The only time that you can use it, you use it is when you're dead. Right? So this is forced. Nobody ever got the money when he's alive. 
Somebody have to die in the family to get money. <laughs> now, if you have five million, ten million dollar uh, life insurance, and you got your wife upset, maybe your wife said, you know, I have ten million, and I have this guy. Go on and take him. Let me enjoy. <laughs> now, it's, be- it's not benefit for your wife to pay that you're gonna stay there, because money wise, it doesn't make uh, any sense. But if you have no life insurance. Every time you get sick, please, boy, I'm give him no life. Give him no life. <laughs> we need somebody to support him. Life insurance, please, this way is the worst thing that you can do. I don't have life insurance. I tell my wife, you need me? Pray for me, for me to be alive. You are my life insurance. Tonight, I'm going to give you life insurance. And I will prove it to you in a second. Now, what's the life insurance? What's the life insurance that you can have? The greatest life insurance. The Lubavitch Rebbe requests people to have in three different form and shape. To study the Rambam. You know the Rambam? Maimonides have a book that's called the Yad HaChazaka. You can find that in the internet, Rabbi Gordon, like a coin in the middle of the same. You can find that in the internet, Maimonides. The way that Maimonides divided, either to three chapters a day, either to one chapter a day, or either to daily mitzvah, a daily mitzvah. If you do the short version, ladies and gentlemen, especially for the beginning, a daily mitzvah on a daily basis, in the end of the year, you're going to finish the 630 mitzvot. The whole Torah, all the obligation you're going to finish. The whole 630, or maybe 620, if you're going to do it, you're going to finish the way that the Rambam Give short explanation. Sometimes it's two mitzvot, sometimes it's three mitzvot, sometimes it's one mitzvah. He always explain every mitzvah to details. It's taking five minutes only. Five minutes, and you even that one is even too much. Five minutes, you can find it on the internet. You read it, you understand the lesson. First of all, you become much wiser. What is our obligation in this world? And second, they said, Kona machale asher sam, Kona machala asher samti be Mitzrayim, lo asim alecha. That you know how many sickness we have in this world? How many kind of sickness we have? 613. Almost. <laughs> nice number. Like in How many different sickness we have? Major sickness. The Gemara said, 83 sickness. To avoid this 83, you have to do two things. Either you eat, and a, sp- and a physical way is to eat breakfast, to be very careful in breakfast, washing hands, doing mochi, and eating breakfast. What 90% of us do not do, or 95 when exactly is the last time that we had breakfast? I have two breakfasts. Huh? <laughs> I have two breakfasts a day. <laughs> one breakfast at night, one breakfast at night? No, one at five, one at nine. Wow. <laughs> so he's definitely protected physically. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you why in a second. Now, breakfast is good and important to eat in the morning. Right one after the fina, you eat the breakfast? You see me yourself, the most important meal during the day is the breakfast, according to Hazar. Not the dinner. The dinner, by the way, according to some opinion, is the worst meal. A minute before, and we, Baruch Hashem, being a Bukharian Jew, we always have Yeshua, Atzlacha, Parnasa, Rebacha. Every night we have different Oshpano and 11 o'clock at night. And then no wonder why we're going and going and going, and why our head is shaking, shaking, shaking. Because night is not the greatest moment to eat. But morning? The Gemara said anyone that eats. Second thing that you have to do is, listen to this. You have to read the daily mitzvah or at least one chapter a day. I will send in the group the a link to what I spoke. This way you can be connected. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm telling you tonight will change your life forever. Guaranteed, and I'm going to give you a proof why it's guaranteed not to have sickness. You see, how many topics the Rambam have when he divides his book? You know how many topics? 
AD 3 topics. Now do you remember how many sickness we have? How do you know that we have AD 3 sickness? Gabriel, how do you write in Hebrew Machala? Machala is sickness. Machala is sickness. And Michael, how do you write Machala? Mem, Chet, Lamed, Hey. How much is Mem in American number? 40. 40. Chet? 8. So far? 48. Beautiful. Lamed? 30. 30 plus 48? 78. And Hey? 5 plus 78? 83. The Almighty God said, All the sickness that I put in the sea, I didn't do it with you. You will never have Moshe, did you hear that? You will never have any sickness. No life insurance, you're going to come into the house, take the paper of life insurance. Now you need me to pray for me. And make sure you're going to have pray for seven more minutes. Make sure you're going to have pray for me. That's why, what is good enough? <laughs> Make sure, you hear that Gabriel? Every, anyone that connects himself to the Rambam is guaranteed not to be sick. He takes five minutes a day. This is the first tip. <coughs> the second advice. By the way, the second reason that the Rambam is important is the only book that covers the whole Torah. The whole Torah. The Rambam writes, if you read my books, you don't need any other books. Except the five books, you don't need anything. I include the Nevi'im, the Ketubim. I include the Gemara, I include the Midrash, the Agadah, the Zohar. Anything you want, I include. He includes in his books everything that you want. So the first time that you have ability to finish the whole Torah. And gentlemen, they have, ladies, they have a debate. If a person has to finish the whole Torah every year, or every three years. Wow. So the one that doing one chapter a day is finishing in three years. The by the way, is the reason. The one that doing three chapters a day is finishing. The one that do a daily mitzvah also finish it in one year. Short version, but finish it in one year. It's a short version, but finish it in one year. And read the way that they divide it. They divide it in order that we're going to be connected to the whole Torah every year. This is the first one. The second advice I'm going to give you. And that one is out of respect to today. Today is uh, the day that Israel becomes a state. Israel was always a state, but Israel becomes a state. Uh, in 1948, in 1948, when the United Nations, a place that do not like us, and I say it in a nice way, and politically correct, they don't like us completely. The first times, and maybe the last times, that the United Nations made only one decision good for us. And from then, the last 75 years, all the decisions that they made is against us. The only decision that they made once, because of the guilty, guilty feeling after the Holocaust. Not because they love us. Even then they didn't like us. But the only decision is that they recognize, recognize the Israelis, the need to have states, and Israel is the state of the Jews. It was in 1948. And then they announced, Israel was always a state of the Jews. That one is coming from the Bible. But a day before, we had the Memorial Day of the soldiers of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, I was a soldier myself. And because of that, I have to share with you two stories to you. I was soldiers myself. I went myself willingly. I didn't have any obligation to be a soldier in Israel. I was proud to, to do it. I went in to be a soldier in the most difficult uh, jobs in the army. My job was uh, very short, because the job is so difficult. Uh, when I came, everybody's dead. The only requirement, the main requirement that they need for me is A, to be a rabbi, and B, you have to be extremely happy. They take you into psychology, they check you under pressure, under this, that you're not a person that falls down to depression. Because what, what I see, <coughs> Is dead bodies, and my job is to connect which finger belongs to which hand, which hand belongs to which body, in order to bring the body, one piece, to the families. This way they can bury their own children in one piece. So again, I mean, maybe I was not in the front line, maybe I was not in Gaza or Lebanon, you know that these soldiers is a hero, sacrifice their life on a daily basis, that we're going to have a home, home that we can call home, America is a great country, 
a country that you have to say thank you, is not our home. The only home that you can call home is Eretz Israel. And before you build in this mansion that you're going to build, and if you want to build it for like a wall, do not forget to give some money and to buy apartments or a house in Israel. According to the Rambam and the Ramban, is a mitzvah d'oraita or mitzvah d'rabbanam? The Ramban writes is a mitzvah d'oraita to buy a house in Israel. It's no mitzvah to build mansion in America, and it's no mitzvah to build it. And Gehenam is no obligation to give. <laughs> Gehenam can be any place outside of Israel. And closet is the Amet. I'm not going to be politically correct. The Jews in Germany also thought that Germany is the home. Until they, one day they wake up and they realize that the home is shaking. And it's when the, Jew, the Jews in Spain, or in uh, uh, Russia, or in Ukraine, or in any other place. And it's always was different places that the ground shake and they run away. The only home that was our home from the beginning of creation until now is the Holy Land of Israel. If you have any opportunity to go with your husband to a vacation, if you've never been in Israel, it's a vacation. But even if you've been and you have a choice, choose Israel. Choose Israel because of a special, special reason. Many times I'm going to other places because they invite me to speak. So I have a spiritual reason and physical as well because they're paying for the tickets. But I have a spiritual, I have to be honest, I have a spiritual reason why to go. But if you have a chance, a chance to go to a vacation, put Israel to be the highest, the highest uh, priority in your life. Don't worry about the price of the ticket. You're doing mitzvah. And mitzvah shall pay. Borei Olam will pay you the ticket. Borei Olam will pay you the, the expenses of the trip. Borei Olam will pay you the hotel and everything before. You have nothing to do. You're doing mitzvah. Nothing is like Eretz Israel. So this is one. If this is so, I'm going to show with you two stories. Short one. To show you what is the soldiers of Israel. The first one is, they invite me this week to speak in Dr. The first time that I went to speak in Dr. I said 11 years. Wow. Wow. Hashem, Shechianu, the Kiyimanu, the Kiyimanu, the Kiyimanu. I came and I gave lectures. Happy to be that I was also the keynote speaker. And I asked for the speech. It was in Yom Azikaron, the memorial days of the 24,000 soldiers that died from the minute that Israel to be correct, 24,213. According to 24,000, tell you something? The student of Abraham. Mm -hmm. Andre, mm -hmm. 24,000 uh, soldiers died from the minute that Israel became a state 48 until today. This is the number. I was in shock. I didn't believe 24,000 like that. And I'm going to share with you one, one story with the live soldiers and one story with the person that died. Let's start with the person that died because his story, when I saw it, I was crying. The person that organized this class was Abraham Kaptir and Chizki. Chizki, Chizki. Chizki is the son of Kahu. You know the Israeli guy? Chizki, no, no, no. Chizki is the son of Kahu. Anyway, they organized it. Sivka Mushab. Sivka Mushab. Sivka Mushab. The three of them organized So they called me to invite me. I came and I shared the stories. And this Chizki studied in Yeshiva with this guy that I'm sharing the stories. Unreal. He is the one that pushed for it. He said, Rabbi Bachman, there's no way that we can have a community, no memories for the 24,000 students and 24,000 soldiers that sacrificed their life for us to have a home, to have an end. To be proud when you walk in Israel and not to be afraid. Every day until now. His name is Roy Klein. Roy Klein was a commander in Golan, Khatiba Khamshim Echad. Khatiba Khamshim Echad is like a, I don't know if the name is telling you, Duvdevan, Sayyid Batkar, Shayat Ishwasa. The hardcore, the best forces in Israel. They are the ones that going into Gaza, they are the ones that going into Lebanon. The Navy Seals of America. They are the, you know, the hardcore of the army. They went in, he was a commander in that group. The group went into Lebanon. Surprised him, Hezbollah, Maximum, they surround him, and they start to give Makat Esh. Makat Esh meaning you're getting fired from all over. You, you cannot run. Ta -ta 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 -ta. So, what do you do? You have to respond with fire. A heavy fire. So, they respond and the terrorists uh, shooting from all over. Until one of the terrorists took a grenade and he threw it in. What is the, your first instinct when you see grenade? Run. 
No, no, you're right. You see granite next to you. What do you do? You run. Listen to what the hero of the soldiers of Israel. We try and see the granite. He's the commander. Fourteen soldiers next to him. He screams, I'm crying when I say it. He screams, my son, Hashem, I'm crying, Hashem, I'm And he jumped on the granite. It was no happy end to the story. He died to pieces. But none of the soldiers even got scratched. You hear that? What the hero is that? Chizki is crying. He said, Rabbi, I studied with this guy. Yeshiva Bahu, religious, as religious as he can get. Willing to sacrifice his life against the nature instinct of running away in order that nobody's going to be scratched. If your wife is asking you to wash dishes or to help in something, oh, you do what a crisis. I'm not asking you to jump on grenade. <laughs> can you take this? And Bukhara never happened against traditions. You're asking me too much. Enough is enough. I cannot take it anymore. What did she ask you? To add five minutes? To put, you know what? Do not wash dishes. I'm asking you, take the plate back. Even that is like... What the chutzpah you have to ask me? To take my own plate that I ate and I made it to me? Back to the... I didn't ask you to jump on a granite. You are spoiled American and it's okay with this? Your wife is also American, perhaps? <coughs> Fancy schmancy? But what did I ask? To sacrifice it. That your wife will never get hurt. If your wife asked you at night to handle the baby, your own son, this one is Bechlan. You're calling me like it's my phone. Rabbi Fakhlin, can you come home? My Christ is in Shalom Bayt. Is it me or is it my wife? I don't understand. She didn't sleep for 20 hours. She went two hours or four hours to sleep. One hour. If you don't, first of all, you don't do it. And if you do it, you do it in such a way that she will never ask you. That you realize when a man keeps his baby? <coughs> oh, he takes the punch. He's sticking in his mouth. He barely breathes. The guy is sleeping. Let my people go. Why? Because your wife asked you 20 minutes at night? Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, Jenny. Hi. We have to study. We have to study. We have to study how to become a human being. Not only Talmud Chachamim. Human being. Ben Adam, Ani Mechapis. Aristo said when he came into the great room, I'm looking for a human being. You know how difficult it is to find a human being? A person that wake up in the net, you can find many of them. That's my name, is full house. A person that keeps Shabbat and accepts Shabbat 20 minutes before and take the Shabbat two hours later, you can find many. A person that says Shema Israel 20 minutes, with Rashash, with all the Kabbalot, Kabbalistics and that, you can find many of them. But to find human being, it's difficult. Difficult, human being. Odam. Odam, you know Odam? Le'olam ye Odam. Before you become religious, an extra religious, an extra, extra, extra religious, become a human being. Rabbi Akiva, if we are already talking about 24,000, Rabbi Akiva had 24,000 students, that all of them is in the stage of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, this is the league. 